Boom shakalaka, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters around the world. It's your boy, Chris Shule, the chocolate Nubian soul brother, a.k.a. the esoteric noetic. And I wanted to talk about the protest yesterday, Black Lives Matter protest that happened in Australia and so many other countries around the world. And it's, on one hand, it's beautiful to see so many people coming together to stand for something that they believe in. <laughs> and it's funny, it's happening uh, it's happening now at a time when the government is so hell-bent on enforcing these social isolation policies, social distancing, I think that's what we're calling it. But it's beautiful to me because when people want to do something, when people believe in doing something, no one's going to hold them down. And I think it's important to, to not to lose sight of the fact that regardless of what the government wants wants to mandate if the people do not want to go ahead with it it can't be done whether it's forced vaccinations whether it is is forcing people to stay at home or anything for that matter if one person has the bravery has the courage to say i'm not going to take it it's this domino effect other people say i'm not going to take it as well and it's beautiful to see people unite and try to achieve something, regardless of whether or not you're in support of it. Now, in regards to Black Lives Matter, I want to talk about this movement because a lot of people have been hitting me up lately in light of what's happened with George Floyd and wanted to get my comments on, on the entire thing. And uh, look, part of me is torn only in that I was actually gonna do the whole as a black man kind of thing, but I, I don't I never speak from that place. But I do want to give you my perspective um, as someone of color. There, I use the term um, in regards to what I feel and what I feel. A lot of a lot of other um, Africans, African Americans, people of diaspora um, have been feeling, and. I want to move away from my trying to be politically correct mindset over here and just speak about this purely from an emotional point of view, purely from the perspective of what I'm feeling within my soul, within, within me. And the thing is, when you watch someone that reminds you of your, your father, your uncle dying, it's horrible to watch anyone suffer abuse, whether it's an animal, anyone that's defenseless, a child, it's horrible. But there is something about and I've heard other, other African, African Americans make the same argument. And I was like, wow, yeah, this is exactly what I feel. And like, this does seem to be a commonality amongst a lot of black people. When you see someone that you identify with, you, you relate to them as if they were your brother. And I want to preface this by saying, I consider all living beings under this planet, earthlings, to be my spiritual brothers and sisters but there is there is a bias in that when you see someone that reminds you ignites this feeling that you are uh, you are related to them because of the emotional uh recognition of them being a brother or sister and on a closer sense because they remind you of someone that's close to you it makes it more traumatic and when i when i watch the footage of george floyd being trampled like that just seeing that um not only did i see a human being I saw someone that could have easily been my father, and it makes it more painful. And it doesn't justify any any special consideration um, in any way, shape, or form, but it makes it difficult to see that. In the same way that whereas it would be horrible to see something happen to uh, a, a friend or any, any, any person for that matter, it's more traumatic when that person is related to you and seems uh, like they are your your family and that's the that's the issue that a lot of black people a lot of a lot of people I think experience when they they see something like that when they are of the when they are of the diaspora and they see something like what happened to George Floyd happen to him that's why they get more incensed as this feeling of righteous indignation and it is right that people feel like that but it's even more personal because it feels as if someone is attacking your family and I always make it a point not to speak about race because I, I think it's it's a dangerous uh, dangerous uh, slope that you you move into when you start looking at people based off of your race. I think if we're to adopt this spiritual idea of agape, then we cast a wider net of compassion towards 
all living beings. You start off with a family unit and you say, yes, this person that is my brother or my sister or my mother or my father is family to me. But then you cast a wider net and you say, but so too are relatives that are of my, of my race, but so too are people of all races. You cast a wider net to your community, to the world, to animals, to all sentient beings. And by casting that wider net of compassion and love, that <sighs> mends the pain of, of division. These, uh, these wounds that often, often become inflamed, open, and lead to, to wars. When people see division, when people look at each other and they see them as being separate, that's how they get you, divide and conquer. Once you start looking at people, not as your brothers and sisters, but as distant, strange aliens from another planet that don't deserve the same kind of treatment, that's when you get this issue. That's when you get this, um, this, this racism, this thing that people are so against. Um, but on the topic, I want to touch on this a bit more. On the topic of racism, I do have to stress that I feel that people look at this thing the wrong way. I feel like being called a racist is the worst thing that you, you can be called in the 21st century. It's worse than being called a rapist. I always see people trying to defend themselves. I'm not a race. I'm not a racist. You know, and look, it's funny because in the same way that I, I've been hearing a lot of my friends talk about how they feel like they don't understand the perspective that a lot of people of color have because they're, they're, they're not perceived um, in that light by everyone else. Um, therefore, they feel kind of uh, feel kind of lost because they they don't feel as if they have a valid understanding of what people of color are going through. But um, in a similar light, um, it's it's difficult to understand the perspective of being a white person or being you. I mean, no one knows what it's like to be you, what it's like to be in a situation where you can't speak your mind openly. Um, about these issues without feeling as if you're either virtue signaling or you're uh, or you're, you're being a racist you know the, the fear of being deemed by everyone simply for wanting to honestly express an opinion about an issue of being of being perceived as someone that is is not accepting and this is the, the issue that I feel a lot of a lot of people have to deal with that are not are not considered to be black and a lot of people have been hitting me up lately wanting to get my perspective on this and they, they feel like this is the general th thing that I've been sensing from people that they're worried about saying something where they're perceived as being racist. They're worried about coming across as virtue signaling, but they do feel that there is a horrible injustice and they want to help. And the thing is, I want to be completely open and honest about this thing. I don't take sides. I don't do this, oh, I'm a black man, therefore I, I have more pain pain than you do this uh this victim olympics that a lot of um a lot of people tend to do i don't subscribe to that first of all your opinion is just as valued as anyone else's just because you're not so you we all have unique experiences we can all learn from each other just because you may have not had the experience of dealing with uh of racial discrimination um in in one in one area um doesn't mean that you haven't had discrimination in other areas, just being discriminated on your race, being discriminated on your age. We all have experiences and we can learn from things. One of the most uh, unhelpful things that you can say, and I've noticed some people tend to say this, is that you should not be speaking on this matter. Who are you to be speaking about this issue? You're not black. A friend of mine experienced this just a while ago. She made a post about just guarding people for, or getting people to uh, to take precautions before going to the protest, which was yesterday about Black Lives Matters, because um, she was worried that people may be putting Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders at risk. Now, I'm not in line with the idea that this virus is anywhere near as, as dangerous as the mainstream media is purporting it to be, but simply because of this, this girl I know making this comment, making this post, uh, a black woman responded with such vitriol with this with this platitude you know who do you, who do you think you are to be speaking you don't speak on on behalf of black people <laughs> i mean what is that and the, the lady that made this initial post by the way she's she's indian 
And granted, I think by most African African Americans, they don't consider someone of that nationality to be to be black, which is just, it's just this ridiculous notion anyway. Um, uh, there, I think specifically when African African Americans speak about black, they're speaking about the diaspora, so from people that are from the from Africa. Uh, ancestry, but it's interesting here in Australia, we have Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders that are considered black, but we all have different terminologies that we use for identifying with blackness, but even racism amongst black people takes place. And I just think it's it's not only unhelpful, but it's, it's stupid when people have this mentality that you can't speak about an issue because they don't identify you as being knowledgeable about it purely because of the color of your skin when it may very well be the case, which it was in this case, that she's had a lot of experience with with, um, with Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders. She's worked with them several times and was aware that apparently they are uh, at a higher risk for certain diseases. That's why she made the post. So it's just something to be weary of, to avoid segregating people from having these discussions just based off of their race. And the other thing I want to talk about, the other thing I want to talk about here is, look, racism is considered to be an incredibly evil, immoral thing. People look at that as something that is the worst thing that you can be called. I don't want to be called a racist. I don't want to be called a racist. It's a horrible thing. But the reality of it, and I'm using the, the classical definition here of prejudice to a, an individual, um, prejudicial discrimination based off of someone's nationality or supremacy the idea that you are you are better than someone purely because of the race that you have now this idea is nothing more than an opinion a discretion that people have people make decisions all the time some people have some stupid ideas believe it or not there are some people that believe that dinosaurs were put here on this planet uh, to test out our faith. <laughs> there are some people that believe in flat earth. There are some people like myself that believe in crazy conspiracy theories, like uh, the, the reptilians and the Anunnaki. We all have different ideas on things and we all make decisions about what's going on in the world based off of these, these unique understandings that we have. You're never going to get away from that. The idea of trying to prevent people from making uh, judgments about people based off of the knowledge, based off the experiences they've had, that is unavoidable. The issue of racism always comes down to people that, always comes down to the force, always comes down to violations. That's what makes something inherently wrong, your actions, whether or not you, the idea of a, of a police officer interrogating someone, pulling them out of their car because they suspect, due to their subconscious bias, and sometimes it's not always sub subconscious, because they suspect that this person ha is ca carrying illegal contraband or is, is, is a threat. When people, when police officers have these powers, this is when the issue of racism becomes an issue. Racism without unauthorized p powers is nothing more than a bad opinion. It's when people are given these powers by the state, police officers are now able to enter your, your home because of probable cause that this becomes an issue. So how do you resolve this problem? So how do you resolve this problem? I hear people saying, we need change. We need change. Well, how do you want to change the, the current system? Do you want to change the current system? And I've heard this by, by changing laws that target black people. So to have a system now where, uh, as a black person, you're given preferential treatment, isn't that some kind of positive discrimination? So I can rub a bank now. Yo, man, give me all your money, fool. Give me $150. Yeah, man, can't you see I'm black? I'm allowed to do that shit, yo. It says that in the law. <laughs> Is it okay? You want to make laws now where I'm able to, to rob banks because I'm black? Or how about laws now where uh, I get away with, um, with a whole bunch of crimes because I'm black? I've always, <laughs> I've always thought about doing that, like, to play the race car. And I've been doing that a bit lately. Um, I feel like there's so many people that feel white guilt that they're always apologizing for you. It's like, um, you know, I'll, I'll do something inappropriate um, on, a, on a date, like say something out of line. And then, I'll, I'll, for instance, a girl won't want to date me. Hey, look, I'm sorry, I just, I'm just not interested in you. It's because I'm black, right? Yeah, you racist. You racist, girl. And then they'll, they'll, they'll feel horrible. 
course they'll have to they'll have to uh, go home and sleep with me because I'm black, right? And you can't run the risk of being racist. <laughs> Is that what we want? We want though? Is that what we want? We want a society where people feel guilt or people have certain privileges beyond everyone else? Isn't that the exact opposite of what we're after here? So, whereas you have a lot of people, some people anyway, within the Black Lives Movement that are advocating for changes to these laws uh, <laughs> that are, are going to show preferential treatment towards black people or to take away laws that target black people. I don't know how you're going to do that. But here's a better solution. How about taking away any law that violates the smallest minority? which is the individual, which is always the individual and applies to everyone regardless of your race. Like all of these, all of these violations that so many people in the black community are charged of, like taking illegal substances, they should never be admissible in court. These are victimless crimes. These are, these, these are crimes where no one's harmed. So these are the kind of laws that should be off of the books. And when you get rid of these kind of problems, when you, these kind of laws, when you get rid of the problem of police officers having discretionary powers, the, the only police officers are private police that have no more powers than you and I, and if they're going to investigate you, it has to be clear evidence. You have to be aggressing against someone. You have to be violating an actual law that violates the, the, the rights of someone, so committing aggression, so force, theft, fraud, it has to be definitive, not this, oh, you look, you, you look like you're the kind of person that would do something that's bad, so I'm going to I'm going to harass you now. Once you amend the situation by changing the laws in the state, that's how you address this issue. Anyway, done. That's all I wanted to say about this issue. Um, I did want to say that I feel like there is a lot of pain going on in the world right now. And rather than focusing on our differences, we need to focus on what unites us. And we are united by the fact that we are all human beings that have this, this, this life force within us. We all, we're, we're all animals. This is from the, the, the root word being animus. We all have the animating principle working through us, the spirit. We are all creatures of God. And rather than focusing on these, these trivial distinctions like the color, distinctions in the color of our skin and whether or not my ass is bigger than yours, let's focus on what unites us, our spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, freaks and geeks, peace out, keep it real, don't drive and text. This is your boy, Chris Shul. Uh, be sure to like this video, helps the, uh, it helps this get more views. Uh, click on the bell, peace out, keep it real, until next time. Boom shakalaka. What is liberty? What the? Who says you can't build muscle on a vegan diet? What's it like being a, a hottie in the vegan community? Are vegan guys better? Yeah. Oh, yes. The economics of the system don't allow multiple competing systems to survive. Engineering, technology, these arts of humanity, they are magic.